What's up guys, welcome to the channel. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you've probably already seen the original video for the uh, original target stand that I made, the $7 DIY stand. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go over a few updates I made and a few things I changed on the newer version. This one right here and another one farther down range. I'm gonna go into some of the details of the things I uh, made better and some of the things I did a little different on the revised version. So uh, let's get started. If you've made the original version like this one, you probably quickly realize that they get chewed up. The uprights get hit with bullets and things like that. And the bottom and the base gets chewed up with frag coming off the steel and shooting down into the ground. Well, I knew that was gonna happen and that's uh, just something that I took into consideration and um, just something I was gonna have to deal with. Because like I said, these are only what, $7, $8 a piece. You know, the upright, the two by four, uh, it's probably gonna get chewed up first. Because, you know, if you miss, like, rounds are going to hit it, and it's got a lot of frag on the front. Just things like that. Um, just buy another 2x4 and cut it, and you can have however tall of a 2x4. Hey, buy 8 foot, cut it in half, and you got two 4 foot uprights. Perfect. But anyway, this would probably be the first thing to go. The next thing that would need to be replaced is the base itself. I mean, this one is probably, like, the original one that I made. It still works. Like, it still holds a target in the middle. It's a little bit loose. Because the wood's getting chewed up and it's been sitting in the back of my truck or outside in the rain and the weather for what a year or two and it's still holding up good it's still structural it still holds the uprights but there's a lot of pieces of jagged frag um bullet fragments stuck into the wood it's all chewed up uh, like this it took a round somewhere in here and it, like blew the back off so this has got a lot of shrapnel i have to be really careful when i grab this one um, I usually grab it like behind the target right here because I know it's safe. There's no splinters right there. I usually grab it right there and then find some other spot to grab it with my other hand so I don't chew my hands up or just wear like gloves, mechanics gloves, work gloves, something like that. So all that being said, I didn't find a way to make the base not get chewed up. I'm just saying this one is ready to be replaced and so I figured I would make some changes that I've thought up or that I thought would be better uh, throughout the process of using these for a year or two. So you can see right here, all those little bits of frag right there, right there, they get shot off. See how uh, chewed up the upright is? Especially right here, that's what I was saying where it got hit by the bullet um, and just blew the whole back of the upright out and it's really jagged. Yeah, and you can see how just how chewed up it is. And how much damage they take from bullet frags so that's the old version you can see the two by fours run straight like that the bolt has to come all the way through i did that because if you're facing it you know you have the short uh section of the two by four this way and it runs back that way i figured it'd be less chance of it getting hit by a bullet and it might last longer but the trade-off is if it does get hit by a bullet it's going to do more damage because it travels through the length of the 2x4 or the width of it, whatever you want to call it. So in the new version, I made the 2x4 run that way. And I also, on the sides right here, I made them smaller. These are 2x2 um, two two furring strips. So they're actually an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So I put those on the sides because over the course of using these, I never, maybe one or two times, put two steel targets and needed you know two by fours on the sides i always put the two by four in the middle for the steel target and you know these furring strips are lighter they're cheaper and they hold cardboard you know plenty strong enough all right so now we're down here down range at this one which has the steel target in the middle um as you can see i've shot it a little bit it's already starting to get a little bit of spall and frag down there but like i said i put the two by four in the middle i put it wide which was uh two reasons one, so I could put the furring strips on the sides, and two, so I could run the bolt the short distance of the 2x4. It was really hard to drill a half inch uh, hole, you know, all the way through the length of the 2x4. It's a lot easier to drill it on the short, you know, axis or whatever, short dimension of the 2x4. And yeah, it probably will take a few more rounds, but it'll probably do less structural damage because it's hitting going through. A thinner section of wood and it'll be like spread out but you know these are gonna get chewed up anyway so it doesn't really matter the main thing was it would fit with the furring strip holes 
and the bolt is easier to drill and slide through. And another thing about this bolt, uh, it's a half inch bolt. Don't drill a half inch hole, drill a five eighths inch hole. That's what I did on this one and I actually found out it does two things. One, it makes the bolt slide through a lot easier because when this wood gets in the weather, it kind of swells a little bit. And these, uh, especially if you leave the bolt in while it rains or whatever, they get kind of hard to get out. You actually have to use a, a hammer or something to drive the bolt through and it just makes it a lot harder. And another thing, if the 5 8 inch hole with a half inch bolt, it actually allowed the bolt to go down just a little bit. So you can see you get a slight downward angle already. And this was a perfectly straight, this was a perfectly straight hole that I drilled through here. See, it's got a little bit of give in it. So uh, you don't have to worry about drilling an angle. You don't have to worry about drilling through the three and a half inch section of wood. You can drill through the short part, drill it straight, and you've already got your angle built in. Another quick thing on the base, I tried to do it with the furring strips, the uh, two by twos, just to make it lighter and cheaper, but it didn't really work because um, you really need the two by four, the, the, the full three and a half inches of the two by four right there on the base to kind of stabilize the upright. It gives it more surface area on the upright just to keep it from like leaning and stuff. Those little two, uh, inch and a half two by twos, there just wasn't enough wood there. There wasn't a deep enough channel for the upright to stay secure. All right, one last thing I did for the upright on the bottom, I just cut a little bit of an angle. You could cut two angles and make it kind of like an arrow shape, or you just cut one like that. What that does is just allows it to go into that slot a little easier. Uh, I did notice when I left them square, uh, it's a little bit hard to get in there because square hole, square peg, and square hole, you know, that sort of thing. When the wood swells or it gets chipped and, uh, you know, gets off, loses its shape, I guess, uh, it's hard to get those in there. And then when they do get in there, if they sit for too long, it's really hard to get them out. And, you know, you're probably, and you're probably grabbing like a chewed up two by four anyway, and it's just not that good. So cut a little angle on it. Just like that and it gives you a little point to guide the two by four in and then it slides in of course these slide easy because they're brand new and that sort of thing but you get the point all right so there we go this is kind of like the seven dollar target stand 2.0 if you want to call it uh, just a few subtle minor changes i made that i think will make it a lot easier for me and for you um, you know making them sideways being able to put the furring strips for the paper targets that sort of thing just cutting out the stuff that's unnecessary and being able to add a few things that are beneficial. I just think it's really going to help. So, uh, you know, go out and make some, put them together, put some steel and some paper on them and uh, see how they work and start shooting them. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. God bless.